Crazy Train Guy presents an Okanagan Valley Railway production. Another episode of How Did He Do That? In the second installment of my series, I'm going to talk mainly about the paperwork. <clears throat> and that's the paperwork which the uh, train crew works on, the yard crew as well, and um, also communication. So basically what I'm going to walk through is first we're going to look at, this is the uh, train crew paperwork here. We'll take a more detailed look at that. And then over here we've got the various um, uh, yard crew. This is the Penticton switcher uh, information. And then lastly we'll, we'll talk about communication. Now this is... Uh, uh, basically documentation that each and every crew is handed to by the dispatcher as the operation continues. So we're going to look at train 72, which is the one that eventually we will put together and run in uh, part three of the video of these video series. So as you can see, so there's some, there's some description there. So train 72, it's an eastbound mixed freight from Penticton to Nelson. And then you've got, where does it originate? Well, it originates in Penticton Yard, which is uh, one of the more unique trains, it actually originates on the layout. Most of my trains actually originate out of staging, so that's why I chose this one. It's uh, one of the more interesting trains, more challenging, and more fun, I think, to uh, build and then run. Um, and then where does it terminate? Well, it basically runs across most of the train layout, and it terminates in Nelson staging. For um, basically the orientation, uh, please refer back to the uh, first video where I showed a uh, diagram of the layout um, and that'll give you a better idea of where these locations, where Penticton Yard is and where uh, Nelson Staging is. Uh, moving down, you've got the locomotives and the caboose. So in this case, it's my uh, train masters. And the engine for DCC is the first one noted, uh, engine 2400. It will be coming out uh, of the yard in forward direction. That's more for a, a staging yard reference because a lot of times the guys can't see the train when they run it. Um, although I'll miss sometimes I will be in the staging area just to ensure it's going the right direction, not back into the uh, end of the track. But uh, that that helps. And then there's the um, the number of the van or a caboose, Okanagan Valley OV900400. Um, and then there's the overall instructions. Um, the start, you need clearance from the yard master to leave Penticton Yard. It's a very busy place, and the yard master controls uh, virtually everything through the yard, including even uh, the main line on, on that portion of the line. It's the only part that the dispatcher does not have control over on the layout. Um, it's just the fact that there are times when the yard master will deem that he needs to block the main uh, for switching. The uh, next part is once he's got that, and then um, then they need to get uh, clearance from the dispatcher to uh, leave and head eastbound on the main line. Um, and then also there's uh, need instructions from Midway Yard. That's uh, that's the uh, uh, smaller yard that I noted in the previous video. And um, that um, he, he needs to stop there, and I'll go over that in a minute. So he needs uh, permission from the Midway Yard Master um, and or dispatcher, depending if it's a light crew, then dispatcher will be monitoring that yard uh, for entering the uh, passing track, which is considered part of the yard. The main line in that case is controlled by the dispatcher. Um, and then down below, there's uh, there's just some a quick thing for DCC reference, uh, especially this is really helpful when you've got people that are visiting the layout or people that use a different DCC system. I'd use Digitrax. Um, but there's, as, as you likely already know, there's uh, many different choices to use. So there's, there's some basic buttons on the throttle, you know, one for the bell, two for the horn, so on and so forth, right? Zero to turn on the headlight. Um, and then there's even a thing of how to unmute engines, although they are already unmuted. All right. And then when we flip it over, we've got uh, a couple of things here. So these, there's a couple of sheets here and I originally did these up out of GMRI and printed them off. Um, GMRI, you can actually automate your switch list and that. I've, mine are static because basically my cars are on fixed trains and that. So I went with more of a static operation. Other guys like to have it where 
Um, there's a more freedom of what cars go on, what trains and such, to, depending on what the system uh, picks from the empties and loads that are available at the time. So here's a quick rundown of the cars that are going to leave on train 72 from the yard. Um, so you've got the top one there you can see is uh, GN, or Great Northern. Uh, there's the car number, GN71405. It's a hopper, cement hopper, and is currently empty. So, and destination is Nelson. Uh, so you move down the list. You'll see at the bottom, I've noted there's going to be 12 cars, rough length, 627 feet, uh, 675 tons. Um, and you can actually note times in that too if you're running a fast clock. I do not run a fast clock. I run sequential. But uh, that, that's a choice, you know, of how you want to run your operation. So you can also see the uh, E for empty, L for loads, different cars. You got a chemical tank car, a mechanical reefer, a box car, grain hoppers, a uh, bulkhead flat, flat car. Um, you got flat trailers, which are actually uh, carrying uh, piggyback uh, trailers. So that's, uh, you know, mid-70s. That was one of the, really the main uh, version of intermodal back then. There were some container traffic, but very little. And at the bottom... You've got two cars that are, look at that, they're only going to Midway Yard. So that's the reason why you need the um, need uh, permission from the Midway Yard Master to enter the uh, the passing track or the siding. Um, and those two wood chip cars are going to be dropped off at Midway Yard. Now, uh, the additional piece of paperwork is, you can see it right here, is, so that tells you, is there anything to be pulled out of Midway Yard? And there's nothing noted there, but there is the two setouts, which are those two cars I noted earlier. So that's a guide as well on each each and every train order has that. Uh, some trains are very busy at that. Some will pick up and drop off or do pulls and setouts um, at Midway. And other ones that are passing through Penticton will pick up and set off as well. Okay, so that's about it for the uh, for the uh, train crew paperwork. Um, although there, I'll get into some more things that come with that in a second. Now, in each uh, train packet will be a bunch of car cards, and those car cards are the cars that are on that specific train. So, as a reference, um, as you saw earlier, we saw a Great Northern car GN one seven one four zero five. And there it is. Now, what I've done on each and every car car is I took a picture of the car as a quick reference. Um, as you get older, your eyes uh, get a bit worse. And so it, to me, it's, it's just a really easy quick reference. Now, there are cases where you'll get identical cars, um, you know, like, say, CN Brown box cars. And you may have five or six that are almost identical except for the number. That gets a little more difficult for the crew, but it's still a reference. But there may only be one of those on the train or two. Okay, so there it is. There's the commodity. It's cement. Color is gray. So it's just a very quick reference. Now, if I flip it over, okay, you'll see that, okay, so what's it? Okay, so it already looks like it's it's traveled a bit this morning or on, in this operation. It may have been morning. <clears throat> on Burlington Northern 253 to Penticton. Now, that train, as I know, because I've set this all up, runs out of uh, Oroville, Washington and into Penticton and terminates. So the... And train number two is going to be the one that we're going to be working on, train 72 to Nelson. So the yard crew is going to be busy building the train, and this car has to go on the train. So once again, covered hopper concrete again. So in this case, what it means is I could, if I wanted to, if I had another uh, cement hopper, I could switch it out and put it on this train instead of this cement hopper. So you do have some options here. These pieces all come apart. So basically, once again, there's the origin. See, it started in Oroville staging, as I mentioned. And it is going to Nelson staging in the long term. And what happens on my cars is there are two or three waybills in here. Let me just get this out here. There we go. And so when this operation is done, I will go through the layout. I basically the I don't have the train crews do this. It's to me it's too too uh, intensive, manually intensive. So I once the, the operation is done, I will flip all the cards on the layout, provide the operation is finished or when it's finished and you'll see that here's the next one so the next time it this train this car runs it'll be on train 71 which is the opposite uh the uh, westbound uh, version of 72 so 71's westbound and it's going to go to pen ticket and i've got a note there to put it on track three i since put that in there just uh, as a reference that's why it's handwritten um 
and it's basically all the same information again. So um, you can see it, it's uh, now I, I can see there's a bit of an error here. I don't know if you picked up on it, but it's showing it's empty again. It should probably be a uh, load going in the other direction, but anyhow, that's uh, yeah. <laughs> um, fun things happen. So that's it for that. And then, well, wait a minute, my bad. Look at that, I've got. Okay, yeah, so it is an error you can see. So once it gets to Penticton, it's going to load out to uh, Oroville, and it's going to be a load. So it should have been a load on that train. So that's something I need to fix. Um, so basically, these are all the cars right now that I believe are sitting in Penticton Yard to go on the train, but they may not be all the cars that we need. Um, and I'll go into detail where the rest of the cars are going to come from uh, this in this video, and more so when we actually load the load the uh load up the train or, or assemble the train so here's a here's a here's a tank car it actually has not this is an old uh i think it was a bachman or something kit but uh actually my father worked for cyan amid so a bit of sentimental value here um and so that's my chemical tank car um and then you've got uh you know here's here's a green uh green cp green car there's another one so basically these are these are the cars are gonna there's a cn box car uh union pacific box car because you've got cars moving between canada and the united states so you're going to get a bit of a mix you know most of the cars in my layout are canadian road names but uh there are some uh, u.s ones as well lastly we're going to look at the track warrant now this is something that's more optional depending on the, the crew i've got and the experience um if i've got a lot of uh new people on the layout sometimes it's actually good to use this but it can add confusion to the operators so sometimes it's easier just to guide them via the uh, communication system which i will go over in a bit so basically uh what this is is it, it's a permission to run over the train layout by the dispatcher um and the reason why i have this is i do not have signals the uh, the layout is uh, as they uh they used to call it, is in dark territory there's no signals so it's all um run by track warrant so basically uh when train uh 72 leaves penticton yard not only is the dispatcher going to tell them they've got clearance to, to 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 hit up on the main line he's also going to or he or she is either also going to instruct them about what to do next so the dispatcher may give the crew uh clearance all the way through to midway yard or he may ask them to take a siding. Now, I have two sidings, as I noted in video one as well, between the uh, two yards. One is at Glen Fir, um, when you first get into Meyer Canyon, and the other one is at the summit at McCullough. So, basically, the, the uh, dispatcher might, might uh, depend on what's coming in the other direction, or what's expected to come in the other direction, may tell give them permission on, the, on this track warrant to go to, say, McCullough and take the siding. Once the uh, crew gets to McCullough, there's a, there's a walkie-talkie in, in Myra Canyon, and they radio dispatcher, and they say, you know, they, they, they report in that they've taken the siding at McCullough and are awaiting the instructions to proceed. And so basically at that point, dispatcher may say, okay, uh, once a train uh, 74 has uh, has has uh, passed you on uh, on the main um, you have clear will have clearance to proceed to midway yard or to the midway to to the point where he needs to get sorry uh, clearance by the midway uh, yard master to come into midway all right so that's basically it here it's pretty straightforward you can see all the different things here hold the main at or take the siding at um not in effect till work between so there may be a train that's going to do some work i've got you know the siding at haynes for instance uh maybe work between uh, uh osoyoos and um and penticton yard at haynes so that and then there's restricted speed um i've got two large steel trestles where uh, speed may be restricted as well so next what i'll do is i will talk about the paperwork that the uh, penticton yard uh your crew has all right, so let's look at the paperwork for the uh, the Penticton Yard Master and Yard Crew, which is basically typically one and the same. Um, usually, it's a two man crew. It's a huge job, big yard, lots going on, industries to switch, trains to break up, trains to to make up. So, 
lots going on. Uh, basically, they're also like the traffic controller there. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the dispatcher does not have jurisdiction in Penticton Yard, including the main. It's uh, basically all run by the uh, by the uh, Penticton Yard master. <clears throat> now, mind you, there has to be a lot of communication because there are a couple trains that do basically run through Penticton. Not very many. And so the dispatcher has to coordinate that with the um, Penticton Yard Master, basically to say, like, is the, is the main open? And if so, then we can run it through. Example of that is the coal train that runs through, right through Penticton without stopping. Okay, so the first thing here is, this is exactly the same piece of paperwork that you saw earlier on the uh, train order that the train crew has. It's just on a, it's on a full sheet, eight and a half by 11. Um, I just figure it's easier for the uh, yard uh, group to work with and uh, whereas the train crew typically moves around the layout and doesn't uh, need a big huge piece of paper to hang on to so that's why I have the shrunken version for them. So like I said it's identical so you can see that GN71405 at the top again and it's the exact same 12 car. So this is for their reference this is the train they have to make up that's going to leave the uh, Penticton yard. So let's move on now to, so then we also have the, uh, the Penticton, uh, basically it's a switch. All the switching has to take place within the Penticton yard. So you can see there's some red marks on there. What uh, typically I do is I leave these uh, red uh, grease pencils. And uh, so these are all, all have plastic uh, protectors on them. And so the train crews that go through, they can mark it off in red, just as a reference point that they've already done it. So you can see there's some text here. So you can see Okanagan Furniture. Um, so basically, um, those cars have been uh, dropped off at Okanagan Furniture. And if I move down the sheet here, you'll see the two that were at Okanagan Furniture were picked up and were put into the yard. The other reference on the right is you'll see the train number that they either came from are going to go to. So... You can see, uh, so in our case, we're going to be working on train 72. So let's see. So we'll move down here. And there we go. So we can see that there are a couple of cars that have to go on train 72. Um, so it's uh, those two flat uh, cars. Uh, Great Northern, GN60409, and CP, CP504311. So if I go back to the... Uh, the switch list, or train order list, I should say, uh, you will see them on here. So there it is. There's GN60409 and CP504311. They're going to be uh, loads, uh, trailer, and flat car. So those definitely have to be switched and put on this train. So basically, that's going to be part of the job of the crew in building, building out that train. Um, other than that, I don't see anything else on here for train 72. Um, you can see there's a couple cars here that are just to go into the yard. Those two uh, furniture box cars and the uh, two bulk uh, uh, flat cars. So the reason being is I have uh, some cars that sit in the yard over a period of the rest of the operating session. And in the next session, they will actually go on a train just to uh, add some complexity to the operating session. And uh, so not everything gets switched and thrown on a train the same day. Um, that's it for that. So basically that's the references that the Penticton Yard, Master and Yard crew use. Okay, so in the last segment here, we're going to talk about these things. So, uh, they're just, uh, you know, re relatively inexpensive Cobra, uh, walkie-talkies. And that's how, um, I use to uh, communicate on my train layout. So I have one when I'm dispatching. There's one in uh, Penticton Yard for the Yard Master there. There's one in Midway for the Midway Yard Master, and there's one in my Rick Canyon as it's kind of isolated and those guys have no visual. So in each case, they can pick up the walkie-talkie and they can communicate with either the uh, dispatcher, myself, or the Penticton Yard Master. So I've turned it on here. Uh, normally what I do is I, set, I select a different channel um, anyway, but uh, here I've got it on channel one. So basically you push this button here to uh, call. Oh, that's weird. Hmm. And then you push this button here to talk. Um, and then you can talk in just like this. And in this case, I've got on uh, channel one. I usually move it up to channel, but in this case, there's nobody on here. Who's this? I'm trying to watch TV. Is this that crazy train guy? Um, 
Um, geez, I, I'm really sorry. I didn't mean to disturb you. Well, shut that darn thing up. Okay, so, um, anyway, I think you get the gist of it, and uh, I'm going to uh, go and make peace with my neighbor. So that's it uh, for this, uh, this video. So on my next video, in part three, we'll actually get to run a train. Thank you for watching this video. If you like what you saw and wish to see more content on model trains and real trains, please subscribe to my channel.